and welcome to this week's YouTube video. So today I'm going to be painting this lovely white borzoi as a demonstration and I'm also going to be talking about how you can achieve more realistic painting. So I think we'll get straight into the time lapse video then and before um, I talk more about realistic painting i think i'll just give you a little bit of a, a word on my process so i've painted this picture in four sittings so the first two sittings i put the paint on very very thin and i use gamsol to thin the paint right down the first two sittings they're very very quick i'm just really using it to try and get a sense of what i'm looking at it's the third sitting really where I do all the hard work. This is very much the longest sitting. Um, I won't use Gamsol to um, thin my paint in this sitting. I'll use something like maybe a tiny bit of linseed oil. My fourth sitting is really just a fixing um, small areas sort of sitting. So again, this is a very quick um amount of time I don't spend very long on this sitting at all but just to sort of stress it's not a hard fast rule sometimes I might do it quicker than four sittings sometimes I might do it it might take me longer I might for example split the third sitting up so I might get it in five attempts or I might get it in seven attempts I, I basically, I just keep adding layers until I feel I've got a likeness. And with each layer that I add, I allow it to dry and then um, start again. If you're interested specifically in how I do the layers, um, check out my other videos on my YouTube channel as I do go into this topic in more detail than I will in today's video. So going back to today's topic then on how you make your paintings look more realistic, um, I'm going to be talking about four fundamental things that I think that you need to do to achieve this and I'll be dipping in and out of a few demonstrations, specific demonstrations, um, whilst I show you this time lapse video. So the first thing then that is really, really important is getting your drawing correct. I mean, it the drawing underpins everything. If your drawing is out of proportion or things like the eyes um, or the nose is not placed in the correct place, it would just look wrong. It doesn't matter how well you try to paint it it will never look correct if your drawing is off. So you have to make sure that you get your drawing correct to start with. So what things can you do then to help get your drawing correct, apart from practice, obviously? Well, there are certain um, sort of little tips that you can do to, to help you along the way. So you could trace your image um, using carbon paper and then transfer it onto your canvas um, you can do it that way or you can um, you can draw on a bit of acetate um, and then put that onto your canvas and then sort of draw underneath it drawing on acetate actually has um, one advantage when you're actually in the throes of your painting and things tend to get painted um, out of um, put in the wrong place and, and, and as you're painting it gets freer and freer you tend to find that maybe your drawing was right to start with it then becomes not so correct so if you have sort of something on acetate you can lay this over your painting as you're going along just to check that your major um, fundamentals are still still in the right place so that does give you that advantage doing um, doing a drawing on acetate some people they project um, the image um, onto their canvas using like some kind of technology I don't know maybe a projector or something like that I'm not actually sure how this method works um, but I have read that 
you know, people do do it in this way. So moving on then to the second important thing that I'm going to discuss for realistic painting. And that is, yes, you've guessed it, your values. I mean, this is really, really important because getting your values correct helps to communicate to your viewer um, the correct form or mass of the object that you're looking at. So by value, I mean... Um, my darkest darks through to my lightest lights. So getting your values correct then, it is quite hard. So I would suggest maybe starting with your most obvious value areas. So for example, in this painting, I started with the eyes and the nose because that those were my darkest darks. I knew that they were the darkest areas of my painting. And I also knew that the bridge of the nose between the eyes was my lightest area of the painting. So I wanted to get these areas in first and then use these obvious areas to help me bridge across and bridge outwards to the areas that maybe I wasn't so sure about. So are there any quick fixes that will help you to get your values correct? Well, absolutely, yes, there is. So I always work with two photographs. So I have one in colour and one in black and white. And sometimes the eye, it can have a hard time seeing colour and black and white at the same time. So I find that if I split the process up, it makes it a lot easier for me. I mean, some people, they go even further and they'll do a full underpainting in maybe raw umber before they put the colour on top. So this gives them an idea of um, a pure tonal composition of what their darkest darks are and what their lightest lights are without actually having to worry about the colour. You can also photograph your painting as you're going along and turn the photo into black and white. Um, you can then compare this to your black and white reference photo and you can see how much you're out from the, uh, the black and white reference photo. You'd actually be surprised. You, sometimes I, I can be sure that it's, it's not my values and then I take a photo I turn it in bl into black and white and I compare and I'm quite a long way out, but I do find this very, very helpful. So the third thing then that I'm going to talk about for helping you achieve realistic painting is that you have to decide whether you're going to paint your edges sharp or your edges soft. So edges basically are a really important factor in helping you create a realistic painting. So in this painting, I have chosen to put sharper edges where I want to direct your eye. So for example, his eyes and nose have a more defined edge and also the, the transition between his lightest lights on the bridge of his nose and the greyer areas around his eyes, that edge there is quite defined as well. So really soft edges then will help provide a contrast to the hard edges. So these soft edges, they blend into the shapes next to them really, really nicely. And if you think about how your eye views things generally, whereby you always have like a, a central point of focus and then everything around it becomes quite soft and blurry. I'm just basically, I'm mimicking this in my paintings. So I'm choosing my central point of focus, which is sort of around the dog's eyes and sort of its nose. And then everything else around it, I'm making my edges much, much softer. And so they, they're turning into sort of barely their edges, really. And it's just sort of mimicking how you would see it in normal life. So it, it helps create this sense of realism about it. But just be aware that when you're using your reference photo, that your reference photo tends to have all sharp edges. 
So you need to interpret the photo that you're looking at rather than just copying it. So the last thing I'm going to talk about today is temperature. So what do I mean by temperature? Um, so what I mean is really, is it warm or is it cool? But you can only judge this by understanding what, it, what it's next to. So the question that you always need to ask yourself is the area that I'm looking at and trying to paint, is it warmer or is it cooler than the area next to it or perhaps the areas that I know for sure that I've guessed correctly? It's all relative when it comes to temperature because it very much depends upon what's next to it. And painting white dogs as well is very hard because they take on all the environmental colours around them and you can have quite a range in values within their fur. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of colour mixes to help you with these subtle temperature shifts. So if you are dealing with warmer areas then I would suggest a mix of yellow ochre plus black. Then add your white. So if I paint a grey mix next to it, you'll see just how warm this mix is. Notice how the yellow ochre mix cools as I add white. So using this simple method, it's very effective way of dealing with the very subtle temperature shifts in white fur. Also remember as well that cool light equals warm shadows and warm light equals cool shadows. So always make a mental note of whether you're looking at warm or cool shadows in your reference photo and then adjust your mix accordingly. So I hope you have enjoyed my video today. I do try and post every week, so please subscribe to my channel. Also check out my website, sarahhallidayart.com and that will give you more details on painting classes that I run. So see you for the next video.